Uh, so this is going to be a one shot and uh, it's pretty much going to take place like this. You guys are being sent to this newly found planet in the Astral Sea. Uh, you're requested aid from uh, Commander Aura, uh, saying that an individual named Yonkers that worked for the Guild Hall has gone missing. They came here to initially investigate this place uh, and haven't been seen since. And they just want to make sure that everything is kind of going okay and figure out what's going on. So you guys have been dispatched here to this tiny tribal island that is kind of built into this uh, kind of planet that is drifting through the Astral Sea. Upon flying towards the island, you notice immediately that it is built of these very like wooden and palm frond kind of style roofs. It's very uh, kind of just beachy and tribal and low technology and simple. It, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like they're very technological here, and it doesn't seem like they have an air of intelligence. So it's kind of the initial bearing that you all would see as you sort of arrive on this tiny planet. And this planet, being tiny, it, it probably would take you about an hour to walk from one side of the planet to the other. So it's, it's a decent size to house us a, a town on, but it's kind of like the whole town and the outskirts, which are very tree-ridden and farmlands, are kind of take up the whole planet. So that is where we're going to be starting today, as you guys sort of arrive on this little planet. And you would probably see these people as you are flying in with your ship and landing. There is a smaller boat that is already docked here on sort of the outskirts of town. It's a very small spell jamming helm that looks like kind of like a dinghy that is just parked there. Uh, the people look to be aborigines of some sort. They are only wearing parts to cover their privates that tend to be made out of leaves and branches and other sort of natural material. And you'd probably see anywhere between 15 to 20 of them out here at this point. And as I'm going to pull up a picture of the individual that you are supposed to look at, be looking for. Uh, Commander Aura would describe him as a, a halfling man that is an alcoholic with rosy cheeks. He has a pompadour, and he is wearing a business suit with a curly mustache. <laughs> I like it. This is the individual you are trying to find, who is also Ricky's old character. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so, this is your objective is to investigate the village and find this individual. Okay. Um, I set your tokens here, and I let the map go. So I will leave this to you all to explore. So um, we are in search of a <laughs> knife-wielding, beer-swilling, mustachio. That'd be easy to find. Okay. I'm glad you're not, Thomas Finney. Well, I guess looking around, <clears throat> I guess we should maybe make contact with the people here and see if we can establish some sort of communication to see if they understand us, so Grapeshot's gonna find one of the few first people that he can see and find and just maybe kinda introduce himself to see if they understand him. Okay, go ahead and roll a d12 for me. Okay. Eight. Ten, nine, eight. Okay, you find a woman 
that uh, she seems to be kind of lost, and she's looking left to right, and she turns and notices you, and she goes, What time is it? Uh, taken back, I will give her the time. And it's, uh, I guess, whatever time it is currently. Say early I morning, think it is. most likely. Yeah. And then she kind of nods her head and goes, What time is it? I think I'll give her the same answer. She looks at you, and she nods her head again, and then she says once again, What time is it? I'm just going to be like, I'll okay, I think I know what I, I think I understand what's going on right now. <laughs> I'll, I will uh, say, I'll look at her and I'll, I'll say, uh, this is my friend Grape Shot, but uh, what time do you want it to be? She will respond again, what time is it? All right, grape shot. I did my best. Yeah. I'll kind of shrug my shoulders. I think I will go on to the next local. Okay, go ahead and roll another d12 for me. Oh, lordy. Three, okay. Uh, you run into an older gentleman that seems to be... Uh, he's sort of raking the outside of his house, and he's pulling some of the loose branches that's kind of fallen off of his thatch roof to the side. He turns and he looks at you. Hey there. Is what the look that he would give you. Kind of a welcoming look. As he says, Good morning. Good morning. Um, can I ask if You've seen a halfling man in a suit running around here. Uh, he will say again, Good morning! As he points towards the larger building in the back that is made with a red sort of thatch roof. Okay. I'm going to nod my head and say, instead of saying thank you, I'm going to say good morning. He will say again, Good morning! Good morning. Okay. So, I think I will point to the big building in the back and say, Alright guys, I think this is the way. And I'll go ahead and lead the group to the big building. Okay. As you start to walk that way too, you'd probably hear a couple other individuals throughout the town. Some of them saying, Good afternoon! Good night! The moon is nice tonight. The sun is bright today. Watering time! The crops are doing well this year. I'm tired. All these people seemingly saying the same thing over and over and over. As if that's the only thing that they know. Very, very weird. As you start to make your way towards this larger building in the back uh, that has this kind of red palm frond roof. It has a single swing door. It's kind of like a curtain of a hide of some sort that you can just pull to the side and enter in. If you would like to do so. I would like to enter in. I'm going to enter in. I'm about to enter. As soon as you enter the door, you see a simple room. It is empty. Everywhere except in the middle of the room, there is a chair. And in the middle of the chair that is currently seated is a woman with kind of very darker tan skin and these monarch wings, like butterfly wings. And she's kind of sitting there. And she sees you and she immediately like kind of winces and she's like, Oh, I did not expect visitors today. Hello. Good morning. Um, we're stopping through and, um, actually we're looking for someone, a halfling, uh, adapting, adapting, uh, young gentleman. Usually can be seen with a pint and a knife. Have you seen him? And a, tw a twirly mustache. 
Oh yes, he did stop by not too long ago. I think a day or two ago now at the latest. I don't know if he's still around as she kind of gestures uh, to the door. You see two other people come walking in that seem to be like her assistants. And she goes, have you seen them, B or June? And they immediately, one of them says, time for adventure. And the other one says, hello. Uh, they kind of nod their head and she goes, I do recall him coming here. I think he, he flew by boat, which is quite strange. Uh, and he was definitely taking a look around the village. Uh, we've had a couple of people come here s recently and then stay. But, I mean, you're more than welcome to take a look around and you can have some of my assistants help escort you around the village if you'd like. Um, sure. You'll, you'll see one of the women that is part of her assistance will say again, Time for adventure! The other Time one... Adventure <laughs> the other one will say, Hello! Hello. And she will say once again, You're talking about a, 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 a smaller man with mustache and wavy hair. Yeah, um, did he seem to be in danger, or did he need help, or was he just stopping by? Oh, he was checking things out, and last I saw, he was taking a look around and becoming familiar with our culture, but I haven't seen him today, at least. I mean, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. Right. It's not very big, I'm sure you could find him in due time. Sure, I'm sure. Um, where did you say he was again? Just around and where was he last seen? Oh, I mean, he was just exploring some of the village, and um, the outskirts of the village tend to be farmland and a little bit of water and trees. So this is the main habitable area. Okay. So he's either still in in the village or he's in the outskirts. Or something happened to him. Could be a possibility. Um couldn't help but notice that some of your residents I can only say a few phrases. Why is that? Oh yes, those are the individuals that were originally here. Uh, before I ventured here, and they were seemingly unintelligible and only latched onto a phrase or two upon me teaching them some common. Hmm. Okay, so you're teaching them common, but they can only latch onto a few phrases. Yes, they don't seem very. And she leans uh, slightly away from the other two that are in the room. Very in intelligent. Yes, I see, I see. But Ooh. this one is B, and this one is June. Uh, uh, if you need any other assistance, I will be here uh, as they sort of escort you around, if you have any questions for me. A lot of the individuals of the area that were here before carried some particular names, I would say. You'll probably notice them off of uh, their uh, more aboriginal outfits that they wear, aka lack of clothing. Right. Um, all right. B, June, would you mind Going us around. Uh, B will go, time for adventure! And June will go, hello! Right. 
what's her did i get the uh lady monarch's name her name is the monarch okay uh and uh, i guess i will ask her that question um just be like i'm sorry i didn't get your name i am referred to as the monarch hence the butterfly wings as she kind of sprawls them out she is it, is, are they like real wings is like a fix to her Go ahead and make a perception check. That's kind of strange because I've never seen that. Uh, from here, they kind of look like they're real. Okay. This first uh, creature we're kind of seeing. Uh, yeah, I, get, I guess it is kind of strange uh, seeing an insect based individual. Man, I, I was I was looking through my spells and I was trying to find uh, <laughs> attack the evil and good. <laughs> <laughs> if only you had uh, Jericho sure. with you. I know. All right. Well. Yeah, protection from around. evil and good. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I have my suspicions, um, but we'll follow B and June around. Uh, as they show us around. Okay. Anyone else want to do anything in particular in here for the moment? Mm. No, I think I am. I think I am. Baron? No. No? Nothing in particular? Okay. Nope. So. Uh, as B and June will exit out, you will start to... They start to make their way around the perimeter of the town uh, looking for this individual that you sort of described. If you uh, cared to follow them or go your own way, that's up to you guys. Um, follow for now. Okay. Uh, I think... I think I think I'm gonna look at uh, Cordell and Baron and just kind of like get the same sense that we should be on our guard. Yeah, never trust a hot chick when we're in a D and D session. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, yeah. they start heading northwards, <laughs> uh, and they run across what looks to be a farmer woman and another farmer or some sort of uh, domesticated animal specialist that is tending to a cow to the north side that seems, seems to be bringing them back into the village. Go ahead and make a perception check, both of you. Or all of you. <clears throat> what? Do you say perception check? Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Oh, natural 20. Yeah. There all really good. Know. All pretty good. Uh, so yeah. all three of you notice uh, they are wearing overalls. And on the overalls, they have each of their names is stitched on their overalls. The one's name is Lady, and the other one is Firefly. Firefly? Yep, Lady and Firefly. Uh, lady will say, "Good afternoon," and Firefly will say, "Good night." As, afternoon and good night. As June will say, "Hello," and B will say, "Time for adventure." It'll look like they understand each other when they speak to each other. It's kind of hard to tell. They kind of just like say their quotes, but they seemingly just keep going on with whatever was happening. Like, they don't acknowledge the phrases that they speak. Okay. Uh, as B and June will start to head towards the southeast, circling back around, uh, you run into the same man that you saw before. This time, with a little more close attention to the backside of his overalls, 
as he is responsible for sort of cleaning up the compound. You see that this man's name is Dune. And he will once again say, Good morning. Good morning again. They will stop. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to say um, Dune. I'm going to say huh. his name. Okay. He goes, Good morning. No reaction from that. All right. Um, so, and this, this was on, on his overalls, on the back of his overalls? Yes. Okay. Most people don't have, like, overalls on there because they're kind of wearing, like, uh, palm fronds and stuff. But for right. some reason, these ones seem like they needed them or had them for whatever duty that they were trying to do. Okay. And they're not like denim overalls. They're kind of like made out of leafy kind of materials. So, they will continue on from Dune circling down to the bottom side of the town. All three of you would notice two other uh, women. One of them seems to be consistently shouting, The moon is nice tonight! You can see a sort of thatch kind of tag affixed to the back of her skirt, that her grass skirt, that says, Cara, C-A-R-A. And the other one um, is sort of staring off into the distance. And you would notice hers says Mary. I'm look around to see if anybody is wearing a suit. Uh, give me another perception check. Looking around in this side of the village on the east side, you don't seemingly see anyone with a suit. And then again, people probably wouldn't be able to fit a half length suit anyway. <laughs> they killed him and they're just a big man with a tiny ass suit on. It's, it's like a crop top <laughs> suit. What happened to him? The sun is um... bright today. The sun. Something very weird is going on here. Um, with the last person, um, I'm gonna call out their name. Uh, hey, Mary. They turn and they react. They turn and look at you, and she says. The sun is bright today. Oh, okay. So, what if that is their name? Maybe. I'll just be like, oh, oh, sorry, I'm nothing. And she'll respond, the sun is bright today. The sun is bright today, yes, yes, yes. Um... Else, they said he was last looking on the outskirts, correct? Yes, I think it might be time to venture out to the outskirts of the village. Okay, it's worth a look. You guys can move your tokens wherever you want. You currently, you'd be on the east side area, okay. I think uh, beyond the fence or beyond that line there, I'd take it would be like the outskirts. Yes. Yeah, so I think we would think I don't know. Obviously we'll come back 
to this area, but I think just to see if we can maybe find traces of Yonkers. Okay. In the outskirts, at least. Yeah. Um, are you climbing oh. over that oh. area of the fence? Yeah. There is immediately to the east is a sort of uh, crop field of sorts. It looks like they're growing some sort of plants over here. Uh, and you would see one individual that is in the field. She looks to be a woman wearing uh, leaves for a breast cover and a grass skirt. Alright, I was going to say uh, hello. Uh, she will turn to you and go, Who are you? Herb shot. She has a tag on her grass skirt that reads Katie. Okay. Um, hi, Katie. I'm Grape Shot. Uh, she looks at you and gives you a nod, and then she says, Who are you? Um, Katie, I'm looking for um, one of my friends. He is a halfling, small guy, a uh, dapper young gentleman. Poorly mustache, you've seen him. She does this kind of like uh, walk with her two fingers and then she points to the village and she will say, Who are you? Saying. So I wonder if we should go back to the village. What's everyone's passive so, perception, by <clears throat> the way? So basically, we are engaging with a village of people that seem to be out of it, or different aspects yeah. of life. Some people can't remember the name, some people are repetitively asking what time it is, and there's a couple of other ones. <clears throat> Sorry, I've been making adjustments to Cordell's character feet based on the conversation Pat and I had this morning about questions D&D questions so. okay. alright alright so I think uh, Katie uh, would look at you too Cordell and go who are you I am Cordell. You must be Katie. She gives you a nod. Hey, is there something bad magic. happening in the village? She tilts her head and says, Who are you? She doesn't seem to think there's anything bad happening. Did um, the monarch say how long ago it was that our little dapper, beer-swilling, knife-wielding, mustachioed halfling came through here? Probably two days ago. Okay. So, And how long ago... How long ago was it that Retainer Aura said that he disappeared? Uh, she would have said it would have been about like a couple of days. Yeah. Okay, so we got dispatched pretty quick. If he disappeared for two days, we got sent out. I mean... He's an alcoholic. He don't miss his beer appointments. Right. Um, all right, let me chew on that. It sounded like you were doing on something there, Vinny. 
um so since Katie says that she let him walk back to the village, I think more likely seen last back in the village instead of being out here. But where in the village did he disappear to? Because it's pretty small. So something must have happened to him. And I think we have to talk to the locals and try to see if they last saw him. So I think we should head back to the village and start asking Dune, uh, Kara, and Miri um, to see if they've seen him and kind of pinpoint where exactly he went and what happened okay. to him. Okay. Okay. I like it. So climb back over the fences. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you probably see B and June have probably continued walking on towards the south side of the village and have continued talking to some other individuals. You guys hop back over where you had saw Kara and Miri. You, you'd probably hear Kara first yelling, The moon is nice tonight! And it's still not nighttime. All right. So I guess we'll walk up to them and ask them the same thing. Um, when was the last, or have they seen Yonkers and where were they headed last? They kind of look at you and they do like a hand sign that's kind of like measuring, but short, like really short measuring with their hand. Like it's a really low palm down to the floor. Uh, and then they do like a mustache twist even though they don't have mustaches, and they point towards the center of town. Before one of them says, The sun is bright today. Uh, there's a person that said that, said that, do they make any hand gestures or? Yeah, that would be Miri, and she's kind of also pointing towards the center of town. Okay. For the big building where Lady Monarch is? A little bit, because from your current position, you can tell that it's definitely to the left of it. Okay. I'll shoot them a thumbs up, and I think we should head around. I'll move my token, so more to this building here? Yeah. Okay. So I guess I'll look around this this building here. The doors for these buildings, too, tend to be either wooden uh, slats that you kind of twist open like a normal door, or they're just dangling palm fronds. This one has a sort of palm frond curtain that you can kind of shift out of the way, uh, but you can even see underneath the bottom of the palm frond. And with your perception, you can immediately notice that there is little tiny stubby legs on the inside of this tent. Damn it. I should have just freaking looked in each one. Alright. So I'll poke my head and oh, at least I'll get into a position where I can kind of see a little bit better. See if uh, it is indeed a halfling man. You immediately see a halfling man wearing a suit, holding a knife okay. in one hand. No beer in his other one, unfortunately. Uh, but he does have a couple of suitcases that are put on the sides of the room. Uh... And let me see... I don't think he'll notice you, but... There's always a chance. Yeah, he doesn't seem to notice you as you, you're peering in. As he's kind of just, like, unpacking one of his other suitcases and setting things down and tucking his knives and daggers away. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and call out. I'm going to be like, Oi! He spins around. He looks at you and twists his head. He squints his eyes. He rubs his eyes. He, 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 you call him Yonkers. He, he twists his head more. He goes, You just got yonked! I beg your pardon? You just got yonked! Uh, what does that mean? You Thank just you. got yonked! 
Oh, don't tell me. Do you know... I'm going to try to find my next question. Do you know where you are? He looks at you. He nods his head up and down, and he says, You just got yanked! Yeah, I figured. What happened to you? He twists his head sideways a little bit. Like, he kind of doesn't understand the question. He'll just say again. Why do you only speak one phrase? You just got yanked! Doesn't seem to understand that question. Maybe in his head, he's speaking phrases at us, but to us, we're perceiving it as one phrase. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> Alright. I'm not sure what the critter could be, but I'm thinking we are... We are dealing with something that has the ability to create uh, some serious mental magic. I don't think it's psionics. At this We've point, some that's for you too. Hallucinations, illusions. A a woman, tall, skinny, petite, uh, sort of tribal woman, with just a grass skirt on. She's not wearing a top walks in, and she's rather bodacious, walks in and sort of wraps her arms around the Yonkers, uh, and on the back of her skirt says the name Caddis. And she'll say, I'm tired. And Yonkers will say, you just got yanked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, I think we should uh make like reason. I don't know, dip out of here. <laughs> no. Hey, hey, Baron. Can you? I think that you are pretty good with riddles. Can you take a gander at these different names that we've got and see if there's some type of message or to see if there is yeah, message or some type of information that we can pull from their names. Maybe maybe some type of anagram or something. Mm. I like your mindset there, uh, Cordell. You're like, this is the most names we've ever been hit with. <laughs> Something's yeah. going on. They, they kind of serve a purpose, I you know. So I think I think we're on to something. Because you have B, June, Dune, Lady, Firefly, Kara, Miri, uh, Caddis, and Katie so far. There are a couple of others. And for the sake of time saving, so you don't have to run around, uh, I will just give them to you, too. Because I think we'd probably walk around and get everybody's names. There's May, Meg, Lee, and Lace. Okay. And that you are correct in saying that there is some sort of commonality or something with the names. What does Dune say? Dune says, good morning. Good morning, okay. I miss it. Yeah, right now it would be about midday. Okay, so it's midday. Okay, so... All right, so we've encountered somebody that keeps asking us who we are. Encountered somebody who keeps asking us what time is it. The sun is really bright today. The moon is really bright tonight. You have watering time 
uh, Watering Time, Tribe Leader, and Freedom at Last are the last couple you haven't really heard. Oh, and the crops are doing well this year. Does that all have to do with the moon? Uh, they're actually, uh, I'm not running a moon this session because there's not enough of you to provide okay. hindrance. Oh, he can't screw with us because, <laughs> or he would feel guilty for screwing with us if he threw a moon at just the three of us. <laughs> We'll leave it be for the one shot. <laughs> <laughs> he don't want to Mike Tyson us. Uh, the moon, uh, the moon, go the, night. the moon god yeah. of the campaign has taken a break this session. He seems. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'll let them be. Um, I'm gonna ask Yonkers. Um, Has there been any new people into the village besides you? And I'm, I'm going to gauge their reactions as I ask. Uh, he shakes his head no as he says, You just got yacked! And go ahead and make an insight check. Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Uh, 20. He seems to be telling the truth. You would probably believe that he is probably the last new person here. Yeah, quite a, I agree with you, Vinny. I think that in Yonker's mind, he's talking to us and giving us answers, but the only thing we hear is, you just got yonked. Yep. Are there any artifacts in the village that the villagers hold in high regard? They kind of look at you and shrug. They, they don't seem to know of such yeah. things. Do the, mostly the villagers here live a simple kind of life here? Very simple tribal, living off the land kind of life. Okay. Um, as a ranger, I guess being kind of one with nature in a sense. Do as I was walking around, did I notice anything? Off with like the cows, uh, with the dirt, um, like does it seem dry? Did the cows seem unhealthy? Make an investigation check, because one of the things you said is a very important. Investigation. I'm good at that. Nope. Oh yeah. Uh, no, all the animals seem to be going pretty well for the most part. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hard to tell. Looks like a very old school town. So I'm trying to. I was trying to figure out if there's something physically wrong with the village, as far as like is it, the dirt like super. I don't want to say like poisoned or dry. Um, do the trees around the village look like they're not healthy? Give me one more roll. I'll give it a yeah an advantage essentially because you did say one thing in particular. A one <laughs> with a zero. Holy oh no! Shit. <laughs> You're just like. <laughs> And nothing's really coming to you. Although, I will say, you do notice some of the people do look dirty. Um, I like your thinking grape shot. What about... Has there been... Can we add... Hold on, let me think about how to phrase this. What about fungus? Have, has the... Is there like a fungus or is the village does the village village include like mushrooms as part of their diet when they're foraging uh from what you've seen it doesn't look like there's many mushrooms it doesn't look like they've been caving or growing mushrooms per se it looks like a lot of wheat and cows and rice and whatever grain they grow out and vegetables they grow out in the field like if they have mushrooms you'd probably guess it's a rarity that if they found and foraged them just have the feeling we're going to look back on this session and say, man, that was a riddle that a first grader could have solved in the first <laughs> hours. Definitely. There is a possibility. <laughs> Although you did pick, you clued uh, something in with the names, which I will give you. 
Yeah, I, I was trying to look back at the names after that. Um, can't really figure it out though. I think you might be overcomplicating some things. Yeah, definitely. One thousand percent. What about? Okay, so. Okay, so we're <clears throat> hot and cold. We've got a lead with the names and we've yeah, got yeah. a lead with plants, animals, food yeah. source. What is a bird? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we're, we're thinking cool. aloud to ourselves. Oh, okay. You had any idea in particular, Baron? I tried to try and say something. No, okay. Um, I'm gonna look back at the main building and see if um if I can perceive if Lady Monarch is watching us or not, or she just kinda like is nonchalant about having these newcomers into her village. So you peer back into her building? Into the, the main one? Uh, she doesn't yep. seem to be there. Currently. There. Interesting. Yeah. It's a small village, so I look around to see if she's like out and about with amongst the other villagers. Make a perception check. You're not you like kind of look around. You're looking in the sky. You look kind of through the outskirts. You're not really seeing her. Okay. Interesting. But her her room is laying empty with just the chair in the middle, essentially. Um, might be a little invasive, but I think I'm gonna go in the main building and look around her chair. Okay, give me an investigation check. Yeah, these. Heck yeah. Okay. Uh, looking around the chair um, in particular, there looks to be subtle scuff marks, assumingly that the chair has been moved and slid to the left and right on the floor. That was an interesting way of moving a chair. I'm going to look around the floor to see if there's like an outline of a hatch that leads underneath the building. Uh, are you going to attempt to move the chair? Yes. As you slide the chair, there is what looks to be a hole in the ground. Okay. I'm a uh, kind of silently motion for Cordell and Baron uh, to kind of follow me. As you slide the chair, you hear behind you, "You just got yanked." In time for adventure. Do they look bad when they say that, or do they look? Yonkers is kind of looking at you. He's holding a dagger in one hand. And then as he's looking at you, you see his head erupt from his body and burst. Kind of like a centipede just blows out of his neck. And it has the oh, face no. still attached to it. Oh no. That's what you see erupt from Yonkers. What in the Resident Evil? <laughs> We're going to go ahead and roll for initiative. What? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. All right. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, I told boy. you we've never run these before. What is it? Oh my god. Oh, how do I turn the names what? off? Oh, okay, I'm just going to delete the names. I don't want you what to know what the names are. Sekiro. Uh, these are actually not from Sekiro. This is actually a homebrewed thing for Unearthed Arcana. Next time uh, you guys would be in the middle here. It's very small, so it actually kind of works. Uh, but I will say too... 
as this combat starts happening. The louder you guys go, the more it's going to alert other people in the village. Oh, uh, no. Uh, that... Yeah, we're we're kind of screwed on that. It's kind of hard to be quiet with... Uh... <laughs> with combat. <laughs> <laughs> we're not pistol. <laughs> the perfect one. <laughs> so, Cordell. Got yeah, the perfect thing. Let's see. <clears throat> well, That's Yonkers fun. is Lars' call. What's that? I have a spell. You do? A silent spell. Uh. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to target Yonkers, but I'm going to hold my action until. Big Shot has a chance to cast his Silent Spell. Okay. Is that your turn there, Cordell? Yes, it is. <clears throat> Hold my attack action. Baron. Until they attack. Until they attack? What are you holding? Uh, Toll the dead. Toll the dead? Okay. That's it. Sweet, sweet. B is going to walk forward towards Cordell and also going to erupt out of her humanoid shell. And you see the same sort of centipede creature wearing the face of the woman that you just saw in front of you as she just sprouts through. And she's going to make two claw attacks at Cordell. First one, 18 misses. And second one, natural 20 drop to a two misses. That will be her turn. Grape shot. Um, I'm going to cast silence. But I'm going to cast it to where Aaron is just outside of the silence. Okay. And the verbal component, and I'm going to go, shh. <laughs> as you just and, hear, um, as the, the like centipede sprouts, and then it just, it just quiet as it, it comes continuing out of the neck. Yeah. Um... Trigger Cordell so, shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Alrighty. You ready for me to take my shot? Yeah, we'll do you first and then continue with Grape Shot since it triggered you. And I think it also triggers Baron. Two misses, unfortunately. Second attack. Second shot. That will hit. 32 indeed hits the bug. 17 damage. Pretty good on. On Yakas! 18 just hits. There we go. Mm. For 14 more damage on Yakas! Yakas. You just that got all silent, too. I like it. Trigger Baron. Totally dead. It fails the saving throw. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a 12. That's a big one. 18 necrotic damage to Yonkers. He just got yonked. Okay. That was the Helds and back to Grape Shot. Um, I think that will be my turn. I was going to, I'll hold my bonus action for later. Um, that'll be my turn. So I'm just concentrating on the spell. Okay. Yonkers. He's going to go. You just got yonked! He's gonna run to the back and attack Baron with... Uh, actually, would he do this? No, he'd stand here first. I think he's still gonna do it regardless. Uh, he's gonna come over here and he's gonna spew a line. So it's gonna trigger Baron, Cordell, and his ally as he blah, spits out acid that shoots in a line 60 feet. Uh, failure, success, and failure. So, Cordell, you will take half, and everyone else will take full. 
Damn. Uh, so Cordell takes 18. 18. Uh, that will be Yaka's turn. Cordell. Uh, use right. rewind. Okay. All right, three more shots on. What's his name? Yonkers. <clears throat> First shot, miss. Oh, that's a hit. Nice. That does hit. Oh, second shot. 17 is the number to beat. Second one hits. Ooh. Good damage on Yonkers. He's getting yonked as you see his like centipede kind of body bleeding. Third and final attack for this round. Also, uh, this is a pistol. Does this trigger? Uh, it does not trigger. So, good damage as you shoot yonkers. Doo -doo -doo. You kind of notice if you get your hand close to these centipede creatures, it'll probably cut you up a little bit. So, is that your turn um, there, Cordell? Does he pop three goodens into Yonkers? Yeah. yeah I think that's my turn. <clears throat> and it, as you fire the gun, too, it's kind of strange because you pull the trigger three times and no sound. It's just silence. Just. Ah, <laughs> uh, It's a beautiful thing. Baron. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I started blasting. First one hits with the 25. Good damage. Uh, Yonkers push back 10 feet. Yeah. Uh, we'll say he hits the wall. Twenty-five hits. There's no sound of him hitting the wall. <laughs> it just he's pushed against it and you just see him. Ah B gets blasted back ten out the door. And that one hits again. She goes a little bit further back, almost out of the ring. It's juiced up a little bit. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay. It'll be B's turn. Uh, B will step forward a little bit, and then she's going to do the same thing. <laughs> Except there's no sound. You just see the acid spew out of her mouth in a 60-foot line. <clears throat> Baron succeeds... And Cordell fails. So Cordell takes 33 and Baron takes 17. Damn. Uh, and then she will continue <clears throat> running inside. That'll be her turn. Grape shot. Um, so I'll take out my scimitar and I'll slash at B twice. Okay. Ooh, first one misses. misses. Second one hits, and as you cut into her with the scimitar, you get pierced by some of the barbs that are on B's body, and you take three piercing damage. Oh. And then the oh, silence yeah. disappears. Wow. Okay, well, um, I'll use my offhand, uh, to attack with my crossbow. Okay. So I had the crossbow feet. Hits. 
11 damage on B. She's not quite bloody yet, but she's hurting. Okay. <clears throat> I got some more spells on me. Uh, that'll be my turn. I'll stay put. Alrighty, Grape Shant. Coming back to Yonkers. He does not get his spit back. So he will move forward, and he's going to make one attack at Cordell and one attack at you, Grape Shot. <laughs> I've been lighting him up. <laughs> yeah. There's a 21 to miss. Damn. Yes. Yeah, oh my that's why God. I switched to the pistol and the shield to give myself a 20 armor class. And a knight. Well, how's a 21 miss? Because I had the cloak of dis the uh, cloak of displacement, which gives him disadvantage. So no, he got a twelve plus a nine, which is a oh, one. it's because I'm hasted. Oh, I'm hasted, so yeah, my yeah, armor yeah. class is pretty few. That makes sense. Yep. And then grape shot, he swings Thank at you, you and nineteen just misses you. Which I'm also. Damn, I got good armor class too. How does a nineteen miss? I thought you have a nineteen. What is going on here? What? Do I have? That's the leather armor. Look of protection. Mm. Oh, because the cloak of... I already have the cloak is on your actual save slots. That's why. Okay. It's already added plus one on your main sheet. That's why. Gotcha. So the benefits give you the extra plus one. All right, so that would hit. So you'll be the first one to take yeah. the hits here. Uh, it's not that much. No. Nah. Oh, especially when he rolls all ones. What a weenie. Holy shit. Come on, Yonkers. <laughs> so, just got yonked. Just got yonked. <laughs> uh, so that will be Yonkers' turn. Cordell, no more silence. Alrighty. Yep. Okay, here we go. Three attacks on Yonkers. Or at least first one or two. Come on, max damage. Uh, he is down. As you shoot him, Hell he kind yeah. of spews and collapses like a centipede on the floor. Mm -hmm. Yonk this, buddy. I'm going to switch my next two attacks over to E. That one, I get to reroll. Hell yeah. Stone a half one luck. Finally. And third attack. Hits as well. There you go. Nice damage. By okay. the miracle of God, no one in the village seems to hear the explosive <laughs> shots of... No fucking way. I rolled like absolute <laughs> D.O.G. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's setting off firecrackers <laughs> the, the high I got a one yeah. a nine and an eight uh, somehow wow so is that your turn there Cordell as you took out Yankees the yeah, man you came here to rescue lies yeah. slow on the we floor we did rescue him you got your hasted attack too, right? Nah. Oh yeah, that's right. I still have the hasted attack. I forgot about. It. All right, hasted attack. One more roll. One more roll for them. There we go. And they got a that's two. It. It's a two on the dice. <laughs> no way. Four shots, and no one in the village hears it. They're just like, "Hello." <laughs> in the distance, and you're just like, "Oh." So, yeah, with a four shots, she's really bloody at this point. That's my turn. Okay. Baron. Okay. I will cast. Life link at the fourth level. Okay. 
causing her to make the save. And then Cordell. Rolls plus fifteen. She fails. Yeah, she fails. All right, Cleo, you get to use three rolls. She is down with that. Holy shit. Um, I'm like, oh shit. Uh, I made a lot of noise. I'm gonna see if the door here, this building has like an actual door or if there's a way to kind of hide at least these bodies that we just killed. <laughs> you, you like slide the uh, palm from <laughs> curtains closed a little bit and uh, yeah. The only thing in this room is the hole in the chair, so you can kind of maybe prop them up behind the chair, or uh, maybe <laughs> I was trying to think of uh, the one where the the guy's dead and you just prop him up in the chair and pretend he's alive but sleeping, put the sunglasses yeah. on him. <laughs> 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 A weekend at a <laughs> uh, forgot what that is. We get into something. Um, actually, I'm gonna move the chair and peer down in the hole to see if um uh, if it's clear in there or if it's is that I was thinking of just dump the bodies down there while we go in. Uh, you look down and it looks like. It's a rough tunnel. There doesn't seem to be a ladder or anything. Whatever can come up and down here seemingly can either fly or climb down the stone. And it, yeah. it, it dead ends straight into a stone floor approximately 20 to 30 feet down. Weak into Bernie's. Yeah. That's what it's. Cordell, you can use three hit die if you want. Alright. <clears throat> totally forgot about the whole hit die thing. I'm gonna grab another drink real quick. Really thirsty today. That works. Sorry about that, y'all. I've just been thirsty after getting it from my neck. Dim torches. 
However, these torches also have moths that are seemingly flickering around the torches. are doing down here interesting and there seems to be a, a large tunnel system underneath this village so that's interesting in itself i do have a map for that as soon as i grab you guys it's tolkien's getting the map set up here let me get this map set up and we'd we be good to go Almost, almost. Ooh. Hey, right. Daniel, you know each one of those temporal this. rewinds takes a sorcery point, right? Get this man. So as you get down the tunnel here, this seems to be a long created tunnel system that exists deep beneath the village and into the middle of the planet. The tunnels underground are lit by torches that flicker and attract moss to the flame. Uh, currently, from where you guys are, you can't really see anything else, although occasionally you see what looks to be these ghostly blue moths that flicker and float just in front of you before disappearing into the distance of the tunnels. And you're not like they're spectral? Yeah, like spectral moths. You're not sure if you actually saw them or not until possibly later. Interesting. So, I have left you guys there. The tunnels are yours to explore. Good crack. Um, I guess I'll just slowly making my way downtown. Making my way. Slowly walking past these moths. Yeah, you, what you'd watch as the moths seems to be drawn to primarily the flames that are on the walls. That act as the lights down here. Okay. In the, dis um, in the distance of the tunnel, you'd probably also hear, Hello? Oh. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to keep quiet. Um, actually, what I'm going to do instead, um, if you'll allow me, I don't have the components. Well, let's see. Hold on. Do I have holy water? I don't have holy water. But... If I don't have the components for protection from evil and good, would you allow me to cast it? Yeah, that's fine. I'd say during this time you probably had would have had plenty of time to prep it for what you need. Oh, it's also not um, a consumed. Oh no, it says which oh, yeah, it's fine. It is, yeah, which is blue, yeah. Um I'm going to cast protection from evil and good on Cordell. Okay. So he's so protected from aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. So let me target him. And Cordell, you and... cannot be charmed, frightened, possessed by any of those creatures. That don't hurt my feelings, do it. Uh, 
as I cast that, I'm just going to say, all right, may uh, the bitch queen numberly protect you, all that is holy, amen. <laughs> oh my god, that's perfect for the last moon that you guys haven't seen yet. The bitch queen. The bitch queen. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to be using stealth to keep up with grape shot. Okay, go ahead and roll stealth check. With pleasure. Oh yeah, since <clears throat> pretty good. Yeah, actually, as soon as I would have heard somebody call out, "Hello," I think I would immediately go quiet too and kind of duck low and or keep close to the wall. So I'd probably hug the wall here. Okay, you can go ahead and roll stealth checks. Actually, Baron too. Also, both of you, so both of you. And I think you would still continue to hear that same voice repeat hello 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 so you'd probably assume that this is june that is also down here okay okay pretty good um i'm gonna round the corner here and just kind of look in all the paths to see if i can maybe pinpoint which direction i i hear that hello definitely north and deeper and probably east from the branch that you're hearing it from. Uh, but in this area too, as you start to come up, give me a give me an investigation check. Let's look at these. As you're looking at these like kind of walls and you're tucked up next to it, most walls are dug and tunnels are dug with equipment and tools. This looks like it was kind of carved with claws and mandibles. Like a creature down here, Doug Fees. Yeah. Shit's about to get real, gentlemen. Yeah. Where's the rest of our crew? <laughs> they're at home watching their tights. They're watching yeah. they're watching Mike Tyson beat Jake Paul's ass. <laughs> 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 We couldn't have video afford video on demand. <laughs> oh no. It's on Netflix too, isn't it? Yeah. Spoof I Netflix. Netflix. Spoof Netflix. I signed up for their free trial. Um Okay. Uh I will continue to stealthily make my way hugging the wall. Uh, north. Okay. All around that corner there. Which, all of you give me perception checks, too, as you get closer to this main tunnel. Hell yeah. Grapeshot and Cordell and Baron, you look into that southeast chamber, and you can see what looks to be body parts that are kind of spewered all throughout the bottom end of that tunnel and uh, on the wall it looks like there's some silk sacks that are kind of cemented to the walls silk sacks yeah kind of okay. look like either spider Spidery. cocoons or maybe a cocoon of some sort It's not eggs. Yeah, a little bit larger, probably human sized. Okay. So they're definitely being consumed. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> I'll uh continue forward. Or actually you know what? I'm gonna look at them. Are they moving or are they still? Would you like to go down there and check? Oh Ooh. From your position, you're a little far. It's hard to tell from subtle movements. Is that south or com uh, immediately east to us? Completely southeast. Although if you do head north, uh, you can't see more sacks in the east room. Mm, I'll continue north. It seems to be the best one for me. I don't know. Uh, as you start to walk north, too, you see some more of those blue spectral butterflies flicker eastwards deeper in the cave before vanishing 
and then some more fluttering to the outcove to the northwest. If they're like dancing lights, or if they're like somebody's form of notifying them that somebody's here. Make a religion <clears throat> or nature check. Do nature. Okay, you're not quite sure. I was just, I've never seen that. I don't know if it's spell or if it's they're actually creatures. Um, I'll continue north. Keep that in mind. Okay. You come into a collection of those spectral butterflies that are housed sort of around a fallen body that looks recently deceased. Probably a couple of days, maybe a week, that is just laying in the middle of the north chasm. The outcove to the far northeast is a larger chamber that holds a golden cocoon. Ooh. Oh, the, the Lady co- Monarch. The cocoon appears mm. to be about seven to eight feet like tall. Eight. Oh, I wonder if the cocoon, the other cocoons are the people with the uh, Las Plagas. Worms, centipedes. The Las Plagas. Gloria Las Plagas, Gloria Las Plagas. And the monarch was the first one to finish that. What, is, what do they call that? Metamorphosis from yeah. the the, the yeah. larval stage to yeah. full blown butterfly. Metamorphosis. Yep. Uh, I actually want Cordell and Baron to make a nature or religion check as well. Nature or religion? I suck at both of them. Nature. Baron, I think you'd kind of get the feeling that these spectral and spiritual butterflies are the sole remnants of the people that have been deceased by whatever creature is down here. Continue to hear at this point. Hello. Is it closer? Uh, you guys are closer, but it doesn't seem to be approaching. Interesting. Like it's all encompassing. It seems to be coming from the deeper eastern part of the cave. So I'll move forward up. Looking at the wall. So that would be, if you're heading to the north part here, this is where the spectral butterflies are surrounding the dead body. And then this part here has the golden, uh, golden cocoon. And then you hear the sounds coming from the arrow here. Um, I'm just 
So I can see a dead body from here. Yes. That is surrounded by the blue spectral butterflies. Does the dead body look like a villager or an outsider? It definitely appears to be an outsider. Possibly a smuggler of some sorts or a kind of traitor, an astral traitor. And the butterflies are just kind of floating around them? Yes. And also looking at his wounds, you can see his brain is missing. And it also looks like his spine has been ripped out of his back. Ooh. Holy shit. That's brutal. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, trying to just take a closer look at the golden cocoon at the very end there. Okay. As you get closer, it's almost like a silence envelops around you. And you can hear a... beating coming from this golden cocoon like a heartbeat as you get closer to to peer towards it you can see a face press up against the silk wall of the golden cocoon peering through you through the through the translucency and you can see the eyes are closed before they open is it the same Ace is a monarch lady that we met earlier? Does not appear to be. No. And I get the sense that she's looking right at me. It is a possibility as her eyes are open and peering through the cocoon. Pressed against it. You're not sure when this will hatch. I am not going to move a muscle. Actually, I'm going to hug the wall. <laughs> uh, oh shit, I use my I use my bomb already. <laughs> oh shit, I don't even have the bomb anymore. Let me delete that. That bomb was used in spectacular fashion though. Yes. We waited forty sessions for that bomb and that bomb paid off. <laughs> <laughs> What do they call that? The smoking gun in uh, most mysteries? Except this yeah. was the smoking bomb. <laughs> it's been there since yeah. the very beginning. Okay. Part of me, part of me wants to attack the cocoon. Um, but also another part of me wants to kind of peek around the corner in the middle there to see what's down there. So, so where, like if where I remember thinking, oh, uh, down here you can see some more cocoons that line the wall. These ones are not golden yet, but they are. Probably five of them are filled, seemingly, and you can see the scatterings of blood in multiple body parts scoured along the floor as it ventures deeper into the cave. Um, and he said I was hearing the hello from north. Uh, east, just, like, where the arrow is pointing. Gotcha. You just hear hello. Okay. 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 Um, I'm gonna silently motion for the guys to follow me to the east. So I'm gonna hug the. Uh, I guess I wouldn't hug the wall with all the cocoons. I think I'd probably walk in the middle away from the cocoons. Okay. Is everyone else following? Yeah. Baron? Yes. Okay. I was going to slowly step by step. I'm making a careful not to make any noise, holding my equipment so I don't make any noise. 
Okay. As you all are walking, especially you, Grape Shot, leading the way, you can see some of the cocoons are pulsing. And you're like, okay, okay. You can hear the hellos coming from deeper into the cave. And when you look up at the ceiling, there is a large centipede creature that is just watching you. Uh, <laughs> Except that uh, it's motionless. It's watching me? Its head doesn't seem to follow, but its eyes are peering down. Okay. So may have not spotted us yet. That's what I'm getting from that. We're just acting like a sentinel, and when we get to a certain threshold, it might jump down on us. Mm -hmm. Its eyes don't seem to be moving. Oh, is hmm. I'm, wonder, I'm trying to figure out if I want to go ahead and take care of this thing or continue forward. Hmm. Deeper into the cave, I mean. Well, I don't know. We take care of it now, or we take care of it on the way back. If we take care of it now, we lose the element of surprise. But yeah. if we, have, but if we have to take care of it on the way back, we're probably going to be fighting more than just it. Excuse me. Or we cut off the head of the snake and the rest of the body. Guys, seen that thing happen before? I think we should probably try to sneak by. Okay. I'm down with that. So I'm going to walk in a way to where maybe if I have to get close to the cocoons, which I don't want to, but I will try to hug the wall and try to avoid its gaze. We'll say they're down here, the cocoons are. And the, the creature oh, okay. is directly above you in the center of the cave. Gotcha. So in that sense, I'm going to watch it while mining my steps, hugging the wall here. Okay. Hugging the wall. What does everyone else do? Following grape shots, footsteps. Okay. And Baron? Same. Uh, as you guys are starting to get ready to exit this cavern, the centipede on the roof <laughs> falls off, almost as if its legs became detached. And it, as soon as it hits the ground, it shatters, as it's just an exoskeleton. Oh no, it molted. And it's looking to feed on us. No bueno. I'll, uh, <laughs> after almost shitting myself, I'm going to continue forward. Uh, as you enter this next part of the cave, it gets immediately more wo uh, moist and wet. It's always good. In the middle is a bright cocoon that is flashing oh, red and gold colors. Pulsing. Is this one also eating? This one looks to be pulsing, yes. And it's rapidly, it's going with the color change of red to gold. Ooh, kind of pretty. And that would be um, in the center of the room. I'm going to cautiously step forward. 
Oops. Oh, let me, uh... Yeah. There you go. You... Cautiously step forward. You hear? And... Hello? Yeah, it's definitely in here. Um... I'm going to step forward in just a little bit more and see if there's anything surrounding the cocoon of note. So we'll say the cocoon is pretty big. It's about 10 feet wide, right in the middle. And from your yeah. current perspective, you don't see anything on the left or right or front. But you hear the hello coming from a deeper part of the cave. Oh, like beyond the cocoon? Correct. Interesting, interesting, interesting. As you are sort of stepping through some of the water too, you can see blood drifting in the streams before it, it filters down some of these tunnels that have been burrowed into the stone. Well... I think it would not be beyond your comprehension as uh, characters at this point to know that whatever this creature is, it can definitely dig. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and as you sort of enter the cavern too, you notice that the walls are spewing with bright oranges and blacks and other various colors that sort of make it look almost like that of a monarch butterfly in here. Okay, so I think all, she is a big, big boss hall. All around the cave, it looks to be like a monarch butterfly with the colors and the patterns of the walls. I feel like I should get into a better position, so I'm gonna go this way. Okay. Uh, get a little closer. Do I see anything to my left here? To your left? Give me a perception check. You know, it's very challenging as you're looking around this cave you see the pulsing cocoon which is supposed to act as something to draw your attention at least that's the her plan is to pull your focus there and mm -hmm. grapeshot you picked the exact direction that she was in looking at this monarch pattern on the wall you see the slight flitter of some of her wings as she's clinging to the wall to blend in and she pulls off and starts to grow as her her body just expands and gets twice its size her visage of being this tribal woman kind of fades as she takes on a more insect like appearance almost that is like a giant ant with these butterfly wings and you'll see one of the other individuals step out from behind the cocoon uh, and the first thing that the monarch now in her true form will say to you is you all are clever aren't you but you didn't get the names Every single name was that of an insect. Ladybug, okay. dune bug, bee for a bee, caddis fly, mayfly. Okay. As her form peels off, she stares at you. We're going to roll initiative. As she will say, uh... you will be our new mockery drones. Fuck. 
mockery drones. Yes, they are mockery drones. She eats the shell of the person and creates a creature that can only say one phrase. You've been yonked. You've been yonked! And she is a mockery monarch. Holy shit. And she has one drone with her, which is... Uh, I have my notes. This is... Uh, shit. Where'd my notes go? This was June for Junebug. So. Let me roll the initiative. Roll for these guys. I like it. Cordell, you are first. All right. Who do I have the clearest line of sight for? Nah, fuck it. Uh, oh. Probably just the mockery monarch at this time. Three. Yep. I'm going to take three shots there. Her. That hits. I'll check it. I've moved. Can I? Yeah, no. Um. Nope, nope, nope. That'll be all I do this turn. Okay. Uh, so go to the next one. It will be June. June's going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and is going to spew straight down towards you there, Cordell. Her acid spit. You succeed, so you'll take half. Uh, 22 total. Wow, that sucks. That will be her yeah. turn. Grape shot. Oh, oh, 51. I am going to cast a lightning arrow on this monarch there. Um, let's see. Next time I make a range. Oh, wait. I'm concentrating. You're concentrating on uh, evil and good. Yeah, because I don't know exactly what type of creature she is. Uh, so for now, I am going to... Hold that. Okay, and instead... <clears throat> I'm going to cast... A Conjure Barrage. Okay. So I'm going to throw a fire piece of non-magical. So I'll, I'll fire off one of my arrows into the air and I'll create a cone. And a 60 foot cone. So basically just her. Um, cast. Ooh. She fails. It's not a lot of damage, but it's still something. Damage is damage. Damn, for third level spell, that's not a lot of damage. It's not no fireball, unfortunately. I know. That's why rangers suck. <laughs> rangers uh, suck. Just give them fireball, they'll be fine. Shit. Yeah, uh, I kind of want to spread out, so I'm going to head north a little bit. So, 5, 10, 15. Is this water difficult terrain? Uh, no. Okay. I'll hug the wall a little bit. Um, that'll be my turn. Okay, it'll be her turn. Uh, she's gonna fly straight down towards you there. Uh, straight towards you there, grape shot, and she is going to make a bite attack at you. It's a twenty-three, almost a natural one. Uh, 
As she bites okay, you, baby. you are grappled. Oh, baby. Uh, Got the perfect thing for that. Your, uh... It looks like your concentration has also failed. But as this sort of lands on you, you feel... Uh, she is not any of those things that your spell would probably protect against. Okay. As you are grappled. That will be her turn. Baron. Okay. Uh, I will. Yep. I will. Twin cast. Polymorph. Targeting her? I'm going to target June. I'm going to target myself. Okay. And sh oh, shit. She bite. Yeah. She will become a deer. A deer. Okay. NPC. Deer. Uh, what is the initiative here? She'll just share it with that one. And she is replaced currently. Okay. And then I would become a giant ape. What is the average hit points for the ape? Is one fifty seven? Uh, and the ape bought five, so it'll go at the same time. You'll act as the ape essentially. It takes your initiative. Yep. Uh. Okay. Now that you are the ape, the gray ape. Mm -hmm. Would you care to move? I will. Yep, I'll move up towards. Actually, yeah, I'll move up towards him. Tell me when. Uh, I have 40 feet, so. There? Yeah. Sure. Okay. I did... That's all I can do at the moment. Okay, we'll cycle back to Cordell. You have a deer and you have the monarch. <clears throat> yeah, I think this is a good opportunity for me to activate the fireball tattoo I've had for a long time. Okay. And this is how I am going to do it. Twenty foot, right? Uh, it's a twenty foot radius. Yep. So. I'm going to drop it right there. I didn't ask how big the cave is. I said I cast Fireball. Exactly. There's her saving throw. Oh, she has evasion. I'm just kidding. Well, I didn't <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she takes zero. She takes 17. Uh, if fire still seems to affect her just as much as you think anyone else would, though, she doesn't seem to be immune just for being insectoid. All right, so that's seventeen points, and let's see. Let me mark that out of my character sheet. All right, tattoo fireball is now zero. And I think I'm going to stay right there. Okay. Unless I can ready unless I can ready something else. Fortunately not, because uh, casting the spell took your action. That took your action. So readying is something action. that I want to hold is an action in itself. Okay. Correct. All right. Now we're straight. 
Okay. Five. That'll be this turn. Fifteen. Twenty. The deer is gonna run over towards you, and it is going to attempt to bite you. He's gonna nibble on your ankles. Uh, fourteen misses. That's the deer polymorph turn. Uh, grave shot. All right. So I am grappled. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm use a bonus action to cast Misty Step. Good move. So I'm going to Misty Step. Right. Right here, right next to the cocoon. So she's still within range. She looks at you. And like, <laughs> sorry, sweetheart. And I'm going to <laughs> use my action to shoot. Nice. As you, you see her mandibles flare open, and you can see the insides of her stomach bellow out towards you. Just That's damage. Um, action twice, and then bonus action. Okay, so I can shoot one more time. Grapple off too. Um, that will be my turn. So as you're looking at her and you fire your two shots, grape shot, you notice that had you stayed in her mandibles, you probably would have been swallowed. Yeah. And uh, let's just say if you get swallowed by this lady, is not very good. Yeah. I'll is... Turn one of those last plagas. <laughs> is that your turn there, grape shot? Yeah, that's my turn. All right, it's her turn. She's going to float on over towards you there, Cordell. Uh, and she's uh, going to well, take it's a nice whoosh. knowing you guys. Damn. <laughs> 17 misses, though. Yes, it does. That'll be her turn. Giant 8. Oh, we're going to have to move up to her. We're going to flank. And we're going to hit her. Okay. We're going to hit her hard with the two fist attack. Okay. Go ahead and just roll. It has a plus nine. Eight. Miss. Mm, I think that just hits. Let me see. No, 19. Just misses. Um. 18 again. Just misses. Oh, well, technically you have advantage, so that would be one roll. Go ahead and do it again. Uh, you need a 10, so that hits. So go ahead and roll 3d10, and it's plus 6. And it is halved because it's not magical. And damage is fine. Damage is damage. Uh -huh. I'll just make sure she stays in my range. Okay. That will be my turn. Sweet. Back to Cordell. Um. What I want to do here. Alright. Three shots with my pistol. Uh, Hits. You can really use a natural 20 here. Some good damage. Okay. Also hits. 28 on the dice. Oh. Good damage. She is bloody. Last shot. 17. I'll take also the hits. hits. Consistent hits. And she also, with that hits. second hit, she seems to get a little bit quicker. Yeah. Um, let me take a look at my hit points here. Uh, I will hold off on using my second win. That'll be my turn. Okay. We'll cut to the deer. Uh, the deer will, you know what? Deer will flank at least to give it a chance to combat that disadvantage. <laughs> it's still gonna miss with a fourteen, but uh, you know, it had a better chance. Grape shot. Um, 
I'm going to use a bonus action to cast Planar Warrior on myself. So it's a it's a ranger class thing. Uh, basically, uh, my next time I hit a creature, um, all my damage becomes force damage, and I do an extra two d eight force damage. Nice. Oh, so I've been saving. That's a bonus this. action to do that too. Yep. Nice. So I'm gonna move up five, ten. Uh, let's do one more. 15. So right there. Actually, let's move over. 20. Uh, fire twice with my crossbow. Uh, that's going to hit, so it deals the extra 2d8 force damage. Yeah, so... Um, hold on, let me see. Oh, 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 I see, I see, I see. Okay, okay, okay. Damage type force. Let's see if I do this right. And then I can you can okay. just roll the two d eight extra and it should, Oh no, it did. Noise. So that's, that's the damage from the crossbow and then an extra. I oh, think it, it already damage. added it. That's kind of crazy. That's nice. cracked. I think I think hold on. it's just one. Let me hit the creature. And... Ranger's Ranger. real powerful. <laughs> so so, powerful. so sad. At level 11, you get an extra 2d8. <laughs> yeah, exactly. On one I'm attack. Gonna... So, yeah, exactly. It's just one attack. So, I'm going to take <laughs> that off. Because I still have one more attack. Oh, it went away anyway. Never mind. It still hits. Or. I now know what Grape Shot's uh, magic item is going to be. It's going to be a crossbow that deals an extra damage dice. <laughs> at yeah. Minimum. Please, sir, can I have one crumb of extra damage dice? Um, that'll be my turn. <laughs> She's like, she looks at you and she goes, Is that the best you got, Ranger? Yeah. <laughs> compared, compared to the other two, compared to the other two, uh, it's like getting a tickle. That'll be <laughs> your turn on hers. Uh, she's gonna get an advantage attack at Cordell, which gives her a straight roll with a twenty-two to hit. Oh, Cordell, I got you take ni a whopping nineteen damage. Yeah, I got something for her. Grappled. I'm not going to worry about the grapple, because now that she's in the second phase, she's going to use her second action to swallow whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got something for you there, Chica. So she will swallow you whole, which means you are blinded, restrained, and you technically have total cover. Uh, and you take... Uh, why is it... Did it not create that? Uh, it's a D8 and a D10. 12 plus 5 is 17. So you take 17 additional points as you get swallowed and you are sitting inside of her stomach where you are blinded and restrained and you are currently burning due to the acid. And you feel that if this kills you in here, you will turn to one of those creatures. Yeah, well, maybe. I might die. Giant ape. But I'm going to go down and fight Go down fighting. Mm -hmm. We could always call it the men in black where you're like, eat me! And you go on the inside and <laughs> blow up the <Yeah>. cockroach. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to restrain her. Okay. I'm going to grapple her. Uh, so you will choose strength or athletics check? Yep. And okay. she is going to do her athletics or her acrobatics are the same. Uh, she'll choose acrobatics, I guess, because it seems more in tune for her to dodge. Even though she is stronger, but it doesn't give her the bonus. So, it's a 13. 
Uh, you got 12. She dodges. That will do it. Okay. Cordell, you're on the inside <laughs> of Lady. All right. I'm going to swap my attunements from the Cloak of Displacement to the Ring of Free Action. Okay. So that takes an action to do so. Okay. And I'm going to use my bonus action for my second win. Okay. So you're no longer right. technically restrained due to the Ring of Free Action. There you go. And that'll be my turn. You are just blinded currently. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm blinded. That couldn't be an issue for what I've got going next. And at the end of your turn, you take another D8 and a D10. Plus the damage. So you take an additional 20 acid yeah. damage. And it'll go to the deer's turn. Uh, there's no Cordell there. So she's going to come running around. The deer is going to headbutt the giant ape. With a 13 to hit the ape. Oh my goodness. For a whopping 3 damage. And that triggers a con save, by the way. A concentration check, excuse me. That is a nine. Advantage, have more caster. Gotcha. Uh, da, 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 da. So that is a success. That will be the deer's turn. Grape shot. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, fuck it. Hunter's Mark. Uh, shoot twice. Bam. Hit four. Big damage. Another hit. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. She's looking Ooh. pretty hurt. Second one misses, unfortunately. That was fine. Move over five, ten... Uh, that'll be my turn. I think this is... I mean, this is dirty, but it's the way that she would do it. Action to disengage. And she is going to fly up to the ceiling above the cocoon. Oof. With Cordell. Okay. Okay. And that will be her turn. Giant ape. Hmm. I will throw a rock at her with my rock. With your rock. No, Eleven misses, unfortunately. I'm going to activate my Cure Wounds tattoo on myself. Okay. Action Cure Wounds. Yep. And... Oh, okay. 16 is pretty good. 16. And let me mark that off my character sheet. Okay. 
Okay. So, where am I at? 74. That should give me just enough to get in one good attack next round. Um, I've already used second wind. Okay. Yep. That'll be my turn. Okay. At the end of your turn, you take another d10, d8. 14 plus 5 is 19 extra, so you are back up to 93 wounds. Right. Uh, June's turn. Uh, the deer is going to bite. Hits. Uh, trigger con save for Baron. <clears throat> okay. That will be that turn. Grape shot. Um. Guess a question for you for the DM. If I were to class cast lightning arrow, would I know if it, it would affect Cordell inside? You're not sure, but maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, might chance it he is steadily becoming uh, part of her essentially I don't want that to happen so fuck it I think I might try it um, I'm going to cast lightning arrow on her so And yes, it does affect the target on the inside. Fuck. Because you said I was going to do it anyway. Yeah. It says whether you hit or miss each creature within ten feet. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. Which he yeah. indeed is within ten feet. Well, also, I guess would she also be in range since she's on the ceiling? Yes. Mm. Sorry, Cordell. If you can hang out for one more round, let me get one re one attack in here next round. <clears throat> Cuz I've got some I've got one more thing up my sleeve and if that don't work, I've okay. made peace with Cordell not not surviving. <laughs> so, uh DM, would you allow me to I guess take back my lightning arrow and just uh shoot Roll. Let's see here. Let's roll a religion check. This is sort of Cordell's words reaching out to you spiritually. Oh, great at these. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. Are. So I'm gonna leave the choice up to Vinny. <laughs> at this point, you can take it back if you would like. But you, as a character, wouldn't know. So I'll leave it up to you. I feel like, in some sense, I feel like Grapeshot would know his spell, uh, being that it does. It targets creatures. A wide range once that, it hits. That is my mindset too. Is it does right. target a range? So I will leave it up to you. I feel like he would know his spell too, but it's up to you. Okay, I want to say as Vinny to Brett. Uh, I'm gonna just do my normal attack for this round, and then might put him out of his misery next round, if anything, before he becomes fully digested. Yep. You also don't know so. what she will do, so that's the part of it, too. Right. That's true. Yeah, I don't know her abilities, so... Shoot. Does bing, it. Bing. Does some damage. Yeah. And then one more shot. Four. She's looking really, okay. really rough, though, so. Okay. <laughs> That'll be my turn. Okay. She. Oh, man. Do math here. She's going to drop and burrow 
under the ground, 20 feet. Oh, nar. Uh, and then she's oh. going to use her swallow again to trigger the damage on the inside. Our nar. So Cordell takes 12 more on the inside. Uh, cutting it close. <clears throat> Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Holy yeah. shit. Real, Cutting real close. close gentlemen. <laughs> and we'll cut to uh, giant ape. She dipped into the hole below. I'll go towards the hole. Okay. I'll take the hit. My dear, dear dickhead ain't gonna do nothing. Let's be honest. If he makes you drop the, the concentration, that'd be a miracle. <laughs> that is a miss. The hole. Yep. Cool. Actually, I'm gonna go on the other side. <laughs> yep. So yeah. And then. Oh fuck. I'm dropping concentration. Okay. And I'm going to cast. So dear, come life link back. I'm casting life link on that motherfucker. At the field. Okay, let me get rid of the monkey. There you go. She fails. I'm just reading the spell too. It does. Okay. 17 damage to her. She's looking really, really, really rough. I get one more d6. Still looking really, well, not 2,100 and number number that's fine I wasn't worried about killing her now but I was worried about healing up Cordell yeah that's all I was checking I, I was checking to see if you had to see them you don't have to it just has to be in the range Cordell you can use a war couldn't hear you I, I heard Cordell, you can use, and then you throw it off. Four hit points. Four hit die. Hit die. I can roll four hit die, huh? Mm-hmm. Nice. The best I can do. Sorry. A ten was a good way. Pretty good. I think Cordell mm-hmm. went from possibly dying to he's not going to die now. <laughs> I mean, I think the maximum she can do is 23. So four and nine. Yeah. He just got nineteen I mean, back. He can save her Markov. Yeah, even if she did max, it wouldn't be enough to drop Cordell. So bacon saver Markov. <laughs> That's some BS to me too. That's <laughs> bacon saver. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, let's go ahead and quick in uh Eldritch to uh, maybe finish her. If not, then Cordell has the honor. How would you like to do this? Mm-hmm. Uh, nice. Uh, just a quick pew. Throw it down the hole. And you just hear, ah! as it just regurgitates and shoots Cordell 20 feet up out of the hole, <laughs> lands back up on top as she's expired in the hole. Right. And then I'll use my other two blast on our June bug friend. Okay. Yeah, also, 
I will say, as you go to throw, as uh, Vinny alluded to before, cutting off the head of the snake, you throw the, the Elder Splash at her and you see the body just go limp. And it lands right over top of her. Oh, yeah. Well, that was anticlimactic. I did tone it down for the three of you, so... Uh, and talk to my I won't get I had <laughs> or two things left in my bag of tricks I hadn't used yet <laughs> there, sorry guys uh, that was a premature ejaculation I toned it down for you sorry. guys there was supposed to be two monarchs <laughs> and two more <laughs> two more of the uh, drones uh, oh boy yeah that sucked but thank you for saving my bacon on multiple occasions. So that's what I'm here for. With that the uh, the monarch is expired, but you do hear that subtle pulse in the red and the golden glow. It starts to turn orange and black as you can almost see butterfly wings starting to sprout from the cocoon. Like the cocoon is just about to hatch. The shit's gonna get burned. <clears throat> I've got uh Two flasks of alchemist fire in my pouch. Okay. I'm gonna bust both of them on that damn cocoon. Okay. And I've as had you, enough of this. You subtly take care of it. <laughs> Lights up. And the cocoon blackens with cinders as it burns into nothingness. You can hear the tunnels grow quiet on the outside. You can't even hear a pin drop through the tunnels. The water lays stagnant and still. You're not sure if you fixed what happened in this village or not. But all you know is it definitely seems more peaceful than when you got here. Whatever story or unfortunate event has unfallen this village you guys saved it so as we're gonna wrap up here the exit out of the tunnels lays still and quiet all of the cocoons that were just primo they were just young lie shriveled and crumpled up the spectral butterflies return and swirl around you with joy and flee as they they lift to the sky out of the hole and fly off into the distance. The town lays steady with all of the inhabitants collapsed to the ground with the mockery drones that lay inside them now comatose or deceased. And that is where we're going to call this session. Thanks. Nice.